Hello and welcome to Disney Movie Investigations. This is our case file on the Marvel Cinematic Universe film Ant-Man. Um, so for those of you that have been watching our videos for a long time, uh, some of you may ask, why isn't this the Rocky Horror Picture Show? Uh, this was supposed to be that, but I had a hard time finding a copy of it. Uh, but I did eventually find one, but not in time to get a video for this week. Um, so what uh, we're going to do is I'm going to do Ant-Man and then we are going to uh, do Rocky Horror Picture Show next week. Uh, for those of you that this is their first time, uh, what these videos are is each week we take a deep dive into a Disney movie that is featured on Disney Plus and we will uh, break it down, kind of tell the story of how it got made, uh, kind of tell the story of the movie itself as well as tell the story of the legacy which this film la uh, leaves in the world of Disney. Uh, so like I said, we are doing the film Ant-Man, which is our first uh, deep dive into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, but Ant-Man came out on July 17th, 2015, and it was directed by Peyton Reed. And it's obviously based on the Marvel comic uh, Ant-Man. And the budget for this movie was $169.3 million dollars. And it, the box office did $519.3 million. So very successful movie, as most of the Marvel Cinematic movies are. Uh, but before we get into the movie itself, let's lo look at a brief background of the Ant-Man comic. Um, so Ant-Man was created by David Mullen, uh, or sorry, David Michelin, Bob Layton, and John Byrne. Uh, Scott Lang is the Ant-Man that is that is featured in this movie, and he first appeared as Ant-Man in Avengers 181, uh, which came out in March of 1979. And Scott Lang as Ant-Man has been a member of the Avengers, the Fantastic Four, and the Guardians of the Galaxy, and he is actually the second character to be the Ant to be use the Ant-Man name. Uh, the first one was Hank Pym which is also in the movie uh, Ant-Man as well. He's the older, the older kind of mentor character. Um, so in terms of the Ant-Man film, this is the 12th film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It, it marked the end of Phase 2, and it uh, was the beginning of Phase 3, uh, which was uh, Captain America Civil War. So this was kind of the bridge between 2 and 3. Um, in terms of production history, about how the movie got made... Uh, development of this movie actually began in 1980s, in the late 1980s, when Stanley pitched the idea to New World Pictures. Uh, but unfortunately, it didn't go anywhere because uh, New World Pictures was concerned because Walt Disney was developing a film called Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. And um, the project was dropped because they felt it would be too similar with too many shrinking pictures. Too many shrinking pictures. Uh, but then in the year 2000, uh, radio disc jockey Howard Stern met with Marvel to in an attempt to purchase the film rights to Ant-Man. Um, it didn't really go anywhere, but it was kind of a note, uh, n nice note to know that Marvel, um, uh, that Howard Stern was kind of interested in making this movie. But then in May of 2000, Artisan Entertainment announced a deal with Marvel to co-produce, finance, and distribute an Ant-Man film. And in 2003, Edgar Wright and Joe Cornish wrote a treatment for this movie. And then delays occurred as in um, different things were adding to the movie. And then the project got shelved for a little bit. But in March of 2008, a first draft was finally completed. And then Stan Lee actually used Twitter to announce that Marvel was prepping the film in February of 2010. So it's been a long road to kind of get this movie done, uh, to get this movie made. Um, Marvel announced, uh, after Stan Lee did that tweet though, that this film would not be released until after the initial, the first Avengers movie. And why that's of note is because Ant-Man is actually a member of the Avengers, was actually a founding member of the Avengers. So everyone was kind of expecting this movie to be before the first Avengers movie. Uh, but Marvel said, no, we're going to hold off and we're going to do it later. Uh, so Kevin Feige, who's the head of Marvel Entertainment, uh, announced in January 2013 that Ant-Man would be part of the Phase 3 of Marvel Cinematic Universe. And I know said earlier he, it was ending of, uh, it was the end of Phase 2, but um, Kevin Feige initially wanted it to be the start of Phase 3. Um, however, pre-production was delayed and it began after the conclusion of Avengers Age of Ultron. 
And then principal photography finally began in April of, or sorry, August of 2014. And then Kevin Feige revealed that Ant-Man would be actually the final phase of phase two and have Captain America Civil War be the start of phase three. Um, so that's kind of our history of how the movie got made. It kind of took a long road to get here, but that's how Ant-Man became a movie. Um, in terms of the cast, for the coveted role of Ant-Man or Scott Lang, there was actually two major actors that were uh, considered for the role. Uh, first was Joseph, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. He was heavily considered. And he was coming off like 500 Days of Summer and um, uh, coming off of... Uh, uh, that bike messenger movie, I think it's called Speed Up or something. Um, anyways, he was really hot property at the time. However, the role eventually went to Paul Rudd, who um, those of you may recognize him from uh, Role Models. Uh, he did, yeah, he was a star in Role Models and he's quite a funny comedian. Um, Evangeline Lilly plays the uh, role of Hope Van Dyne. And uh, so she's kind of the... Um, the love interest for Scott Lang. And then Corey Stahl plays Darian Cross, or as well as the Yellow Jacket. So he's the main villain of the piece. And then we have Bobby Car Carnaval, who plays Jim Paxton. And Judy Greer plays Maggie. They're the parents, or Maggie is the um, the, the uh, ex-wife of Scott Lang. And Jim Paxton is the stepdad to uh, Ant-Man's daughter. And then Michael Douglas plays Hank Pym, who is the senior mentor to Scott Lang and the original Ant-Man. And then you also have Michael Pena as Lewis, who is Ant-Man's best friend. Uh, so now that we know kind of all the players and what, how the movie was set, let's take a look at the plot. Um, so armed with a super suit, the astonishing ability to shrink in scale and increase strength Cat burglar Scott Lang must embrace his inner hero and help his mentor Hank Pin, Pin pull off a heist that will save the world. Um, so this movie actually had an extensive marketing plan behind it. And I think the reason for this, and this is just me speculating, is that because Ant-Man is not a well-known Marvel character like Captain America and Iron Man. So they had to kind of get uh, people really excited for this movie. Uh, so in March of 2014... ABC actually aired a one-hour special called Marvel Studios Assembling a Universe, and it included a sneak peek at some of the pre-production plans that they were doing for Ant-Man. Um, and this special is on Disney+, Plus if you guys want to see it, uh, but it's basically a documentary, kind of how they made the first Avengers movie. Um, and then in new November of 2014, the same year, ABC aired another special called Marvel 75 Years from Pulp to Pop, uh, and that's also on Disney Plus as well. Um, and this showed a behind-the-scenes footage of Ant-Man because uh, they were well into production at this point. And then a full-length trailer finally debuted during the premiere of ABC's television show Agent Carter, which is also a Marvel uh, Marvel television property. And then um, in April of 2015, a viral campaign actually started where... Um, Leslie Bibb, reply, reprising her role from Iron Man, uh, did a fake news ca cast, and she was playing Chris, journalist Christine Ever, Everhart, and she was doing a fake news class, which included the fallout of the um, events from Age of Ultron, Avengers 2, as well as she mentioned Scott Lang's imprisonment, so kind of setting up the movie. Um, so this movie did very well. It set up uh, kind of the another piece of the Marvel Universe, and it set up Ant-Man as a character uh, that could be used in future cinematic universes. He does appear in Captain America Civil War, as well as the Avengers, and uh, not Endgame, sorry, Infinity War. Um, and then there is two sequels as well. Um, we're going to cover uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp in a couple weeks, uh, so that'll be covered. And then as well as... Um, Ant-Man is featured in the Disney theme parks. He is a walk-around character in Hong Kong Disneyland, um, along with a theme park attraction. We're going to cover the theme park attraction uh, in Hong Kong Disneyland. Um, it's called Ant-Man and the Wasp Nano Battle. I'm going to go more into depth into that when we cover Ant-Man and the Wasp, the movie. Uh, however, in Disneyland, uh, what's set to debut as part of uh, the new 
a Marvel uh, themed land area where a Bugs Life uh, land was was originally. They kind of tore that down, and now they have a Marvel area, and they have a fast uh, counter service restaurant called Pim Test Kitchen. And this is obviously based on the MN characters, and it's a counter service restaurant and microbrewery. And the story behind it here is that Pim Technologies is using the latest technology to grow and shrink food. So that should be coming out. In, I don't know if it's quite open yet because of COVID delays. Um, obviously, Disneyland's not operating as of recording of this right now. Uh, but yeah, it's set to, as soon as Disneyland opens, I'm sure it's going to be part of the opening day plans. Um, and sorry, it is in California Adventure as well. So, um, and yeah. And then with these Marvel movies, they always have a end credit scene. And I thought I just, uh, I'm not going to spoil on what it is, but it does give a sneak peek at the sequel, uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp. So yeah. Um, so final thoughts with this. I think this is one of the better uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe uh, pictures. It has a great mixture of humor and action scenes. Um, like one of the funniest scenes is when uh, Scott Lang, uh, Paul Rudd, is uh, working at Baskin Robbins. I think that scene is absolutely hilarious. And then it has great action scenes as well. Like um, the climactic battle between Scott Lang and the Yellow Jacket I think is really well done. And it's interesting to see that kind of small perspective uh, they're having this massive battle, but then they go out and uh, kind of zoom out, and then you get to see the the smallish impact of the uh, battle. So I think it's really good. And then I like I like the character of Ant Man. I think he's great again with that humor as well as um, he's likable as well because he's doing everything for his daughter Casey. So um, yeah, I think I definitely recommend this movie if you guys haven't seen it, which I like. I think everyone's heard of it, so definitely I would go check it out. Um, so a couple of housekeeping things. Like I said, our next uh, case file is going to be on the November bonus poll winner, which is the Rocky Horror Picture Show. And then uh, the other uh, thing is our December bonus poll is now uh, live. And I thought I would share that this month is going to be Christmas movies. And so the four options, that, or five options actually this year, this month, because we couldn't decide between just four. Uh, so we have the uh, tale, uh, the movie White Christmas, the, the Grinch starring Jim Carrey, the Claymation specials, which include Rod Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and uh, Santa Claus is Coming to Town. We have a Muppet Family Christmas and we have the movie Elf. Um, so yeah, head on over to our Facebook page and cast your vote of which Christmas movie you want to see covered here on the show. All right, guys, I want to thank you guys for tuning in and I hope you guys have a great day. Bye-bye.